Today, I'm spool knitting. Some assembly required. Hello. So for Christmas, Lily got this super duper cute kit for spool knitting and making pom-poms and then making little dudes out of them. And I said, I like making little dudes. So I figured we would figure out how to use the spool knitter thingy and see if we can make something cute. So this is the spool that came with the kit. This one's bigger. So I thought you might be able to see a little bit better on this guy. Spool knitting is kind of cool. It's kind of like finger knitting, except you can put it down, which is great. And you can use normal sized yarn and it makes these little, you know, finger sized cord things. So what I'm going to do is first, we'll figure out how to use this. We'll figure out how to make the braid cord thing. And then we will use the cord to cover up these little little balls that I have. Uh, we have a gajillion of them. I'm pretty sure that they used to go in a, a ball pit or something like that. We don't really use that anymore, but we still have these guys. So you can also use uh, like a styrofoam ball, or if you have really old yarn that you don't like, you could probably wrap a little ball of that, uh, like a wooden, some sort of insert, like the shapes that you can get from the craft store that you're like, oh, what do I do with those? This apparently. I will also be using a glue gun that I have later. Now, what if you don't have a spool knitter spool thing? Then I guess you can make one. So you can make it out of a toilet paper tube, some popsicle sticks, and elastics. So let's do that first, just in case you don't have that. Um, other things that are handy, but probably not ultra necessary, a crochet hook to get the to get the yarn through the spool, handy. Some little pokey thing to pull the yarn over the loops, handy. And a darning needle or a yarn needle, handy. If you don't have the darning needle and the crochet hook, I'm sure that you could use a piece of wire bent to pull pull the yarn through. If you're using this, you don't need anything to pull the yarn through because it's just gonna go through. This guy, you know, it's a little bit skinnier. <laughs> so first let's figure out how to make one in case you don't have one. So we're starting with our tube, our sticks, and our elastics. I feel like two elastics should be sufficient. So I think it will be easier to put the elastics on first rather than trying to hold these things in place and put the elastics on. That seems irritating. So basically all you have to do is just stick one of these little popsicle sticks on each side. So top, bottom, side, and side. Ugh. Now let's make it a little easier for ourselves and have them stick out an inch. We'll find out if this is a good idea. Not hard. Now, in a minute, we'll find out if these are sticking out way too much or not enough. See, that's it. This is the whole thing. Now let's find out if it works. It works. That's cool. It's a little bit, because this is so much wider, it's a little bit thicker than the, the cord that you would get from the actual spool knit thinger, but it would totally work. So, thumbs up on this guy. Cool, that works. So if you don't have a little knitting loom thing, the handmade one is kind of awesome. The only thing that I would change is maybe I would sand it down a little bit. One of mine, the yarn kept on catching. So that's annoying, but it's totally, uh, you can totally deal with it. So I will put this to the side and we'll get started. Great, we're ready. So whatever nitty spool thing you are going to use, whether it's a real one or the one that you made, it starts exactly the same way. I will be using 
this purple. Step one. Put the yarn right across the top. Stick your crochet hook up, catch the yarn, and pull it through. If you're using uh, the homemade one, you don't really need the crochet hook because it's wide enough. But these guys are kind of rough on the inside, so it's really hard to push the yarn through unless you have something to yank it. So next, we're gonna start looping around and we get going. So the yarn, you're gonna hold underneath your loomy thing, go clockwise around each of the little pegs. So go this one, turn it to the right, turn, turn the whole thing clockwise and go around the next one. Whoopsies, comes off. There. So you've got this little clover leaf situation at the top. Then, now keep on holding on to this bottom, bottom string. Now, you just wrap it around. So you're wrapping it counterclockwise. Each of the pegs now has two loops on it. So one is, you know, twisty around like we did at the beginning and one is just a circle. So here's what I do. I, instead of taking the first loop that I did, I take the one closest to the end. That kind of attaches it a little bit to, to the loom, which makes it, I think, so much easier. So you just grab the bottom loop. I'm just gonna use the little darning needle. Pull it over the peg. Now, starting with that one, just kind of attaches this so I don't have to hang onto it for dear life. And I'll just go around. Also, the nice thing about starting here is that you don't have to count to make sure you've actually got all four. Because I found when I did not start with that one, I would miss, I would miss the last one. Because somehow this would get loose and it just wouldn't work. So, then we just do it again. Wrap it around. Start at the, at the end. You don't have to do it that way, but I think that it's a lot easier. Start at the end, go over the peg over the rest. Ta-da! Every once in a while, you pull on this string. It pulls this business down into the nitty thing. Awesome. So, Really, that's it. You just keep going around, scooping them all over, pulling on the bottom string. Let's see what it looks like in Fast Forward! Eventually, when you pull on the bottom, some cord will come out and you can say, Oh my goodness, yay, I have like five inches done. <laughs> Yay! Cool, that's cool. I think that I'm probably going to need um, more than five inches to cover this. The cool thing about this is it's a really good, you know, waiting around craft. You can totally bring into the car because it's small, it's portable, and you can put it down. You know, you don't even have to finish the whole row. You can say, oh wait, I have to go do something and you go do it. And then you come back and you're like, well, I haven't done this one and that one. It must be there. You can just resume whatever you were doing. Now, I never knew when I was little what in the world you were supposed to do with these. I mean, we basically made like belts and swings for the stuffed animals. Not much, not much, but I always like to find something to do with all those cool things that you do to keep your hands busy when you're waiting and you're bored, like finger knitting and, and spool knitting. I think it's cool to find something to finally do with those. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can do something like that. I haven't come up with too many super useful tips and tricks because it's pretty straightforward, but a couple things. 
one, when you're starting, make sure you really hang on to the tail coming out of the bottom of your nitty thing because you don't want it to come popping back up and you want to really be able to make sure to keep everything sort of not tight, but taut at the beginning. And second, speaking of tight, you don't want to wrap your yarn too tightly or it'll make it really hard for you to pull your stitches off. And you don't want to do that to yourself. Make it easy on yourself. That's all so far. I'll let you know if I come up with anything else. Ta -da! So this seems like it should be enough to cover the ball. I'm gonna just go with it because it should be fine. So the next thing we do is we're gonna get our cord off our knitting spool. Did you know, fun fact, this is also called a knitting Nancy. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'm gonna probably call it Nancy from now on. Are you ready, Nancy? Excellent. The way that I like to thread these needles when you're using yarn is get a little piece of string, fold it in half, make a little loop, poke the loop through the eye of the needle, then, and you can grab the yarn, and pull it through. It's easier than trying to jam the yarn through the eye of the needle. For me, you might be fine at it. So let's get a closer look. So what we are doing is we're taking our little blunt needle. We're just going through all of the loops on the pegs. So one loop, pull it off, bring your yarn through. Next loop. Pull it off, bring your yarn through. Now remember, don't just pull it off. You have to also bring your yarn through. I did that once. I was like, why isn't it working? And that's why. And finally, okay. Yarn through. Ta da! Is it over there, Nancy? Now what you can also do, just to make sure that everything is nice and tight at the end, is just put your needle through a couple of these stitches and make a knot. There. Ta-da! Now these are going to be glued to the ball the way that I'm doing it. I mean, you might be doing something where they will face out, you know, be, maybe their arms or something. In that case, just make another couple knots until it's the way you want it to look. I'll make one more. There we go. Ta-da! And that's it. So, let me get the glue gun and we'll start wrapping. So here I have everything to make my critter. It's going to be loosely based on a bear. I don't know what it'll look like, so I'm not going to get too specific yet. So I've tied a bunch of knots, so it should be fine to snip the ends. We'll find out. I'll leave them a little bit, a little bit long. Don't wanna, don't wanna go too crazy. Then all we do is just start spiraling them around the top. So I'll glue it down, give it a little spiral, and then just keep on gluing for maybe one time around, one little spiral. And then I'll try to maybe make some ears. So let's do that first. You could also do this with regular glue, but I feel like that would be a lot more waiting. I feel like waiting. So for the ear, this may be a good idea, or it may not. You could sew it. You could sew it closed. I'm just going to glue it. So I'll do maybe an inch of glue and then just fold it back on itself. So we'll glue right on the cord. Squish it. Ta-da. Now I will try to do the same for the other ear. Maybe not the most even thing you ever saw. That's okay. And now we keep going.
Okay, now, I also made these as arms and legs. I'm going to use the longer one as arms. Snip off. I'll weave it in. If you have a crochet hook handy, you can weave in your ends. Another option is to stick pipe cleaners through the tubes and then you can make them, you know, make your arms bend in different directions. I'm not going to do that for this one, but I do plan to make more of these so we can test out pipe cleaners on the next one. So here's the head, such as it is so far. I'm going to put the arms, I'm going to glue them right to the front and have them kind of stick out. Then I'm going to keep wrapping all the way around until I get to the bottom. Kind of looks like a pig, but it's turned a little bit into a mouse rather than a bear because I thought that it looked cute with a long tail. So let me just give him a face. I'll show you what he looks like. Or she. I don't know. And now it's a cat. <laughs> Possibly. But that's really cute. This is made with just a ball, some googly eyes, some yarn, and a little nose. That's so fun! That's really cool. I was not sure <laughs> what I would be able to come up with, but it's cool that you can use something that's really just a busy work kind of a thing and turn it into something kind of adorable. Weird, I'll grant you, but adorable nonetheless. <laughs> That's awesome. I like this guy. I don't know what he is. I guess he's a cat now. So, if you liked this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Tell a friend. Leave a comment. What do you think I should make next? Because I am definitely making more of these. And the next time I make them, I'm definitely going to try the pipe cleaner in the arms and legs. I might even go back in and add some pipe cleaner to this guy. Why not? So that's cool. Definitely come back if you want to see that because it's coming. Eh, for sure. If you like videos like this and you are not subscribed yet, you can do that right underneath the video and click the all notifications bell so you don't miss anything. New videos come out on Tuesdays and Saturdays, so stay tuned. And until the next video, I will be thinking of different guys to make. Be awesome, and I'll see you then. Bye!